Okay, it's Joe. It's the Joe Giannini Show. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about uh, turning a split bowl. Uh, this past year, been a little over a year now, I went up to Campbell School and I took a course for, uh, put on by Alan Carter on how to do these, these guys here. Basically, I'll show sure you how to do it. They're fun to do. Uh, you start out with something round and then you cut it in half and put it together. It opens up an unlimited limit of possibilities of what you can do with wood. We've got one guy at our shop, uh, Jeff Dusick, that couldn't make it tonight, but he's done some marvelous stuff with this. Yeah, I taught him how to do it, and he's gone. He's, a, he's an artist, and he has taken this thing, and he's gone to zones that I have yet to even think about. But you can mount these things in plexiglass stands. You can just do, you can put them offset with a stand. You just really, uh, they're fun because you get to do a lot of woodworking. You get to turn finials. You get to do some routing work. And it's just a, a good combination. These make great potpourri pots if you want to take and drill holes in them and put them in the bathroom and fill them up with potpourri or something like that. So, but it's a fun, fun thing to make. These here that I've made, this one here, uh, that when I turn this, and this is still in its round shape, you cut grooves in it. And this is copper wire, and this is uh, uh, just powdered uh, uh, turquoise. And, and CA glue. And it really it comes out great because really after you turn it, after the copper wires set in, in CA glue, then you just turn it and it gets flat. It really, really comes out really nice. Uh, and this one here is the one that I made for the demo. This has got two pieces of copper in it and this is paprika. <laughs> I cut a hole and filled it in with some CA glue and filled it in with paprika. <laughs> and you can do that with cayenne pepper, black ground pepper. It's amazing what you can do with spices. And stuff like this. And once it's sealed in CA, it's it's impervious to anything. That's going to be there forever. But it, it gives you something else to do. Uh, oops. This one here has a removable lid. These two do not. And they have different kinds of cradles for them. This was the first one I made up at school in Campbell School. And uh, this was one round disc on top of another, and the joint just didn't come out that well. And uh, of course, they don't have anything up there that you could use for filler for any turquoise or anything. So I just filled it in with some sawdust. But uh, it really was a, a class in learning how to put a little bit of an art perspective into wood turning. You can turn wood all the time. And you just look at it as making something round and symmetrical. And I really never have gone into doing anything quite quite artistic. It has no value. You can't do anything with it other than make for you. It's pretty to look at, but it's not functional. But it is fun, it's a good skill builder, and uh, you learn different finishing techniques and all. So that being said, we'll, uh, we'll get started. When you do one of these, you can start out with one piece of wood. That's great. But if you can't, glue two pieces of wood together. Try to get the grains to match because you're going to cut it. You're going to cut it right on that glue line. So if you have two, two six-inch boards, you know, uh, get your grain going this way. And when you, Get them good, good plain surfaces, glue them together, and then go ahead and cut your disc, make it round, turn it, and then when you, when you do cut it, cut it right on that line, and if you do have to take a little bit off it, just get your sanding block and just sand it down, and, and it really comes out quite nice. thing you want we want to start doing is, is hollowing out. This is going to be this is going to be the inside of the bowl. So we're, going to, we're going to scoop that out next.
By the way, this is being held on by a uh, basically a glue block, but not glue. I'm using double-sided tape on a face plate. Uh, very similar to this right here. Only this one here is, is actually just a, a waste block. And I find this double-sided tape. Not this is stuff here. I buy clothes. And this is phenomenally strong. You usually have more trouble breaking it off. Here. It's very thin. It does a great job of holding. outside a little bit. Typically how thin do you, uh, you want to make uh, I like to get it about, about like that. About a quarter. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe less than a quarter. It depends on the wood and what you're going to do with it if you're going to be turning decorations into it. Time to sand that if you if you wanted to do sand it, but I'm not going to create any sanding dust in here tonight. There's no point in it. At this point here, if you have a uh, you have a couple of options, we have to turn this guy over right now. If you have cold jaws, that's probably one of the better ways to do it. Just uh, mounting it in cold jaws and then reverse it. If you don't have a cold jaw, cold jaws, you could use. Uh, what I like to use this guy here is a uh, one of the handiest tools I have in my lathe arsenal really you can take double sided tape bring this guy up here lock her down as long as you have a flat surface crank this in here then back this right off take your chuck put it in the lathe and you're ready to go and it really, really does a nice job. It's perfect. You don't have to do any, any adjusting or anything. But you have to have a good flat surface right up in here. And just sand that good and smooth. Make sure it's smooth. Use a, uh, a 
a good bowl gouge, good sharp, just get that good and, good and straight across. We've got cold jaws, so tonight we're going to just use the cold jaws. You can also use a vacuum chuck, too. Yeah, you can do a vacuum chuck, exactly. If you have one. Now, at this point here, this surface has got to be perfectly flat. This edge has got to be perfectly flat because when you glue these together, you really, really want them to be hit. I use this guy right here. That's enough. I'm not going to do any more. But basically, that's what you do, and and it's perfect. It really is. Okay, we're going to take this off now, put it in the cold jaws. I'm going to remove this from the tape. Uh, if you just put pressure on it and hold it, it'll come. I'll tell you what, it, it's, it stays on there. I've seen people do this with the tape and break the like the wood. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you soon learn. Hard. And I also find, frankly, in the summertime, it's a lot tackier in the winter. So when you're sanding that and then you cut it and then you're ready to reassemble, did you ever get one that wasn't quite perfectly flat? And no. No. If you if you don't check it, then you you shouldn't go past that point. I mean, you should be able to not see any daylight through that at all. And, uh, I mean, it, it, what, what else you can do if you don't think you can get it flat is uh, put a piece of uh, walnut or something in there, you know, as a, as a, as a spacer. Once you cut them, they, they never change, they don't change them? Well, if you do it the same day, no, but if you put that up, <laughs> put that up and come back to it after you turn it, you come back in a week, it's going to it's gonna move. Actually, if you punch a hole through it, it really shouldn't matter because that's right on the center line, so it's not going to hurt it. And it wouldn't hurt to have that little dimple there. But this is where you got to be careful when these teeth come around. here you can put this on the inside you can get to all of it or a vacuum chuck which is what I have at home and I do use a vacuum chuck for this using the cold jaws also prevents you from getting in there with a sanding disc and really sanding this out but let me clean this up just a little bit here This, you can also take a, a disc of wood and just cut a, a recess in it to fit, your, to fit your bowl and just stick it inside that recess and, uh, and turn it like that because it, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. That's getting down to where you can sand it now, and we're not going to do any 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 of that. But at this point, at 
this point you have a little dot right there for me to arrest and you find your center line which is right there and just take it to the bandsaw, so cut it in half, flip it over and glue it together. You glue on it, put them together and just run some painter's tape over it in about three or four spots and you wind up with something like that. And if you're off a little bit on the ends, just take it to a bell sander or to a flat sanding block and do this. You would have to take your bandsaw marks off, right? No. Well, yeah, yeah, which is very, you use a fine tooth blade, you're not going to have too much problem. But that, that's the concept of how, how to do this. It's really it's nothing, nothing miraculous about this, a very easy process. Uh, I don't want to spend the time or make the dust to go any further with this, but... Uh, Oh, here's a little embellishments like the. Uh, yeah, at the time you, before you turn it, right now would be the time that you would go in there and do do your rings or whatever you want to do at that point. Plan in advance what it is you want to do. If you want to put a secondary piece of wood on top of this one, get you a good flat surface and then glue your piece onto it and then turn it. And your just it's your imagination is your limitation. Uh, I don't think we want to get into how to turn finials or any of that tonight. But one thing I will show you. Is when you wind up, when you wind up with, uh, with one of these, the next step is to try to figure out how to make a lid for it. <laughs> well, they'll tell you to put it down and draw a line, but I find the easiest way take it to a copy machine, set it on it, and make a copy of it. So now you've got to copy the inside dimensions and the outside. So you want to make like this one here. This one here, I've got a, this is a separate piece of wood. So what I did was I cut this one out, this inner part, glued it on a piece of wood, sanded it down, and glued it on, and I made uh, the out another one with the outer mark for this one here. But what I did was I enlarged it a little bit to compensate for the, uh, the overhang that I wanted, and that becomes the outside. And if you mark a center hole on it, you're going to line up just fine. So, and it, you get to make videos too, which is really fun. Any of you, I'm sure most of you have turned videos before. If not, see Beth. You need a magnifying glass to see. <laughs> but, uh, but they're fun to make. And uh, these make good little gifts, I mean, for, and like I say, you will get to use some, some skills that uh, you may not have used before, like doing this kind of work. It's really about all there is to it. It's not a, not a complicated process. If you go online to uh, Alan Carter Studios, you'll see some of the work he does. He sells his stuff for big dollars. He, he, he does this for a living. And uh, he's got some really nice stuff that he's done with this technique. Uh, it's like spaceships and everything else. And uh, Alan Carter Wood Journey website uh, is really a good site to go to if you want to, want to do more of this kind of work. I think pretty well covers it. Is it Alan Carter? Alan Carter. A L A N C A R T E R. Uh, and, uh, he lives in uh, Tennessee now. Nice guy. Thank you. I hope you get a chance. Uh, take, go, to, go up to Campbell School. I tell you, it's a great school. I just spent a week up there. Get to meet. Uh, the class that I was in. Uh, Ten of us. I think seven of the people in my class actually had their own studios. That's what they did for a living. And part of our class, we had to do demos. Each person had to do a, about a one or two hour presentation of something that no one else did. Well, so it was fun. We all got to share each other's knowledge and, and stuff like that. And that was a fun, fun part of the class. Uh, and you're going to get some good, good questions out of that group too, those people. But they're not novices. They're, they're skill returners and they had some really good, good questions. It was a very informative class. That's about it. If you have any questions, I didn't want to drag this thing on too long tonight. I'm tired of this. I know I'm sweating. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Joe.